I mean, in you know, part 94 of the world has gone completely mad. Here's what Sussex Police had to say uh, in their statement 14 hours ago. On Monday the 26th of September 2022, we reported on the conviction of a sexual predator for historic sex offences in Sussex. The court sentenced Sally Ann Dixon as a woman to 20 years in prison for offences committed against seven children, now adults. Uh, we reported factually on the findings of the court, which heard that at the time of the offences, Dixon was living as a man. John Stephen Dixon. The relevant offences were recorded as being committed by a male. An early reply to a comment on Twitter was inconsistent with our usual style of engagement. We apologise for this and have removed the comment. We recognise the rights of the public to express themselves freely within the boundaries of the law. Well, that's nice of them, isn't it? Yes, it you is. You will have followed this story from a few days ago. Basically, somebody, quite a lot of people actually said, what the hell are you doing uh, referring to this woman as a woman when, in fact, the woman committed the offences as a man? And they actually said that they don't care what the gender of a criminal is. Uh, it's their job to report on the crime only, which wasn't quite what they did, because what they did was, was they made out that this was a crime committed by a woman when it was clear not only was it not committed by a woman, it was committed by a man who was a man at the time of the crime. I mean, this creates problems on so many levels. Mm. Number one, it messes up crime statistics because suddenly you see a spike in women committing all these violent crimes yeah. that they're not known to commit at all. Number two, it's completely untruthful and not in line with reality. It's not women committing these crimes, right. it's men. And third, the public is absolutely right to say that is a man, yeah. not a woman. Right. And it is not up to the police to, pol to police pronouns. Um, but I was really pleased to see that Suella Braverman came out and said very, very strongly, you should not be doing this. And then they they reverse course. Well, they have reverse course, which is fine. But what hasn't happened, though, uh, is that this uh, appalling paedophile uh, has been sent to a women's prison where he will no doubt have an easier time because, as, as we probably know, and it may not be something to celebrate necessarily, but if paedophiles get sent to men's prisons, they tend to be treated pretty badly. Yes, it's a huge safeguarding risk for women, yeah. which is what so many people have been saying for a long time. But as always, it seems like the gender identity of the criminal is put before women's safety. Mm. And I think that this is something that needs to be subject to much greater yeah, scrutiny. Totally. Because at the end of the day, here's what a uh, detective uh, said who was involved in the case. Dixon came to know these vulnerable young children successfully, successively through family connections and used that trusted access to systematically abuse each of them for sexual gratification, in some cases for several months at a time. Only when one of the victims eventually came to us in 2019 was the terrible and distressing nature of Dixon's offending over many years finally uncovered. As one victim escaped this predatory interest another would take their place but sometimes some victims would be offended against simultaneously i mean this guy is clearly a monster and yes. i'm going to call him a guy because he committed those he is, crimes yeah. when he was a man so i don't care what he thinks he is now he could be a zebra for all i care yeah. he shouldn't go to zebra prison he should go to men's prison absolutely this person is a huge danger to women yeah. and children and they need to be protected but i think that women in prison at the bottom of the barrel and for a lot of these campaigners especially these these political activists they don't give them a second thought no they don't think about them at all and, you know, we're going to see what well, we've already seen already in some prisons that we're, female prisoners are being impregnated mm. by these male prisoners. Yeah. And I mean, well, in some cases they've been raped, yes, never mind yes, impregnated. Yes. And he's actually in a prison which has a mother and baby unit. Now, I don't know what the exact nature of his predatory crimes were, but you shouldn't be anywhere near children, that's for sure. No, and the women in those prisons are having to suffer massive anxiety. It's like some people have pointed out, it actually goes against human rights to house male and female prisoners together like that because it presents such a safety risk. Yes. Um, and I cannot believe that that big question is being obscured mm. by the fact that people are not using the correct pronouns. And the question I would have for you, Candice, is when did all this happen? You know, because it's kind of gone on behind the scenes. You know, I had no idea for example, until relatively recently, that some men who are criminals have been sentenced to crimes which are hor horrendous and hideous, and they've ended up in women's prisons. I don't remember ever having a debate about this in Parliament. I don't remember ever being told in a press release by the Department of Justice that this was now a new policy. When did it happen? No, it was quite quietly announced. I think it was in the last few years. I think it was feminist campaigners. I think Julie Bindel was quite a prominent one who yeah. was drawing attention to this issue and saying that this is a real problem. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, not but just... what I'm saying is, is that she started to draw attention to it and, and, and praise to her for doing 
doing that, but when did it all kind of sneak through and who's responsible? Is it the civil service? Exactly. Is it, yes. you know, because yeah. I, I don't remember a conversation in Parliament about this. No, there's been no conversation. Well, there's been no debate around it because it's become such a toxic issue. Very few people have been able to talk about this openly mm. and, f and voice their concerns. They've right. just been shouted down as transphobic. So this is what happens. This is the logical end result of this. Yes. When you shut down debate and you don't allow people to say what they think right. about things. And now we've got, uh, on the opposite end of the scale, what I would call the sort of frivolous end of the gender scale, virgin... Um, a cabin crew being told they can wear any uniform they want and they can have a pronoun on their badge. And people say, well, why do you care about that? Why is that important to you? Why don't you let them just wear whatever they want? Because that is the same thing in the end, which leads to this kind of nonsense where Sussex police are effectively threatening somebody uh, who has questioned what they've done and how they've described a person. And that's why the two things are connected. Exactly. I mean, you can't just undermine reality a little bit. You can't say some men are women and some men aren't women. Right. As soon as you say that a man can become a woman, then that person has to be regarded as a woman. Then they're going to get access to women's spaces. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. You Once you open the floodgates, they're open. Yeah. It's a slippery slope. Exactly right. And, of course, one of the things that they argue all the time, these uh, sort of trans activists, is that, you know, why would you object to having a gender-neutral toilet? They have them on aeroplanes. Well, yes, that's true. They have them on trains. Well, yes, that's true. But they don't have them, to a large extent, in most other places in the public eye, right? So if you go to a restaurant, yes, there are some restaurants that will have gender-neutral toilets where you have cubicles, but what they won't have is a situation where you can walk into a toilet and see a man urinating against a wall, uh, and over there is a woman putting her makeup on. Most women and men don't want that. No, they don't. I mean, there was an article a few years ago in the Daily Mail about that, mm. about one of the theatres had turned its bathroom into gender-neutral, yeah. and you had grown men standing there at the urinal with yeah. young girls walking past them, right. which was is horrible for both of them. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody wants to wants have to that. deal with that. No. And so here we are once again reacting to what I'm afraid is a very small minority of people in the in the country who feel sensitive about this pandering to them and upsetting everybody else. Exactly. And actually very real safety concerns. Yeah. I mean, because you will get bad actors. You will get people who just want to get access to women's spaces for their own nefarious purposes and no one will be able to challenge them. No. And we've seen cases where men, as I said, like maybe this guy, uh, have decided to become women on the basis that they've committed some terrible crimes and they know they won't be punished as badly if they're women. Uh, I don't know why that is, but that happens to be the way it is. And instead of going to a main male prison, he goes to a female one. Yes, it's possible. You can't discard the possibility. I mean, people like this, um, they are sociopathic, they will act in their own interest, and they'll do what they want to do, which is why we need people to be a lot more shrewd and tough-minded around these issues and not so naive. Yeah, absolutely right.